Attack on Mika! School was hell for me. Everyone in class ignored me on a daily basis. They all picked on me. And there was nothing I could do about it. And at the center of it all was this girl named Yabami. Oh, Mika, you're here. I didn't even notice you. A few months ago, this boy she liked asked me out. She's had it out for me ever since. And her friends spread all kinds of rumors about me. And Mika stole him away from her. What a bitch. She's such a slut. They filled my shoes with paint. They poured milk on my school lunch. This one time, they put glue all over my seat. It was so embarrassing. Uh, look at her. That's got to be embarrassing. Why is she still here anyways? Just quit already. Yeah, nobody wants you here. <sighs> then one day... Okay, introduce yourself to the class. Uh, hi, I'm Ichi. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> A new kid came into our class. Oh, wow! He's so handsome. He's gorgeous. I'm gonna ask him out. Hey, Mika, don't try to steal him away from me now, slut. What? I'd never... Wow, chill out. Uh, I know. Why don't you switch schools? Nobody wants you here anyways. <laughs> I would if I could, but... She kept picking on me day after day. I did my best to ignore her, but... I guess she didn't like that either. A few days later, she started getting the teacher involved. Shingeki? You forgot your PE clothes again? I thought I brought it, but... It's gone. Stop making excuses! That's all you ever do! You need a shape up! I know I didn't forget it. They hid it. You got a problem with this? She's wasting valuable class time. Can we start already? Okay, Shingeki. Go back to class and read the health education textbook! Okay. Where did they hide my gym clothes? <sighs> How could they do this to me? Wow, that's so mean. Huh? We didn't do anything. Maybe she's doing the laundry at school because she's poor. <laughs> that's gotta be it. Looks like she's gonna start crying soon. Who cares? Come on, let's go. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. Things went on like this for days. Then one day, we had a class meeting about the school trip. Okay, get in groups. Boys on this side, girls on this side. Shingeki, why are you all by yourself? Get in a group! Uh, but teacher, she said she's not coming on the school trip. <laughs> hey, Yabami, Ichi is looking at you. A what? Fine. Mika, you can join our group. Come on. Huh? No way. I can't be in the same group as her. Who knows what she'll do? All right, then. What? No. Come on, Mika. Listen up. You're lucky I let you into my group. You better do as I say or else. <gasps> <sighs> Mika, I'm home. Check it out. I bought it for the school trip. That looks expensive. Oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a special occasion. Mom, she's always trying to save money. This must have cost her a fortune. Hope you have fun on the school trip. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. I can't tell her I'm being bullied. I don't want to worry her. Then on the day of the school trip. What the? Why is she here? Lame, maybe I should go home. What? Don't do that. It won't be fun without you, Yabami. Why did she come? I don't want to be here either. But after everything Mom did for me, I can't just not go. I don't want to worry her. Whatever. Let's just ignore her. Yeah. This is so much fun. Let's stay up all night tonight. Yeah! Let's change into our pajamas. I should get ready for bed. 
This is so soft and comfy. Thanks, Mom. Huh? Oh, sorry, my hand slipped. <gasps> Why are you looking at me like that? I apologized. Yeah, you got something to say? What's your problem, huh? Screw this. Let's go outside and get some fresh air. Yeah. Hey, I heard Riri not invited some boys over to her room. And maybe Ichi will be there. What? Seriously? Let's go. I'm sorry, Mom. I'll hang it out on the balcony for now. Hopefully it'll dry. Crap, I lost. You lose! You know what that means! <laughs> oh man, what do I gotta do? I know! That loser girl is in the room next door! Yeah, that'll be so funny! Oh, you think so? Yeah! And hug her from behind! That should be interesting! Uh, I think that's a bit too much! Don't listen to her, Ichi! But he's lost the bet! He's gotta do it! Ugh, why are they doing this to me? Then... Hey! What are you doing there? Hello? I know you can hear me. Why are you here all by yourself? Does it look like I'm having fun? They always pick on me! Look what they did to my PJs! My mom got them for me! You talking about those girls? Yeah, my mom's a single mother, so she doesn't have a lot of money, you know. But she still bought this for me. Why do you let them run all over you? Why do you let them run all over you like that? You're just gonna let them do this to you? <sighs> you gotta stand up for yourself. It's not gonna change anything. Just leave me alone. Don't listen to those jerks. Don't cry here. Why is he being nice to me? My mom is a single mother too, so I know what it feels like. And these PJs? My mom bought them for me for the school trip. If they did that to me, I'd lose it. But you, you just kept quiet, so... I don't know, I'm just saying. I had no idea. Look, you gotta stand up for yourself, otherwise they'll never stop. Don't let those jerks ruin the school trip for you. Come on! Let's go have some fun. Have fun? How am I supposed to do that? What do you mean? I got no friends and everyone ignores me. I can't have fun. You got no friends? Fine, then I'll be your friend. What? Why do they pick on you anyways? You haven't done anything to them. You gotta learn to stand up for yourself. If you want a friend, you got me. Don't let those jerks ruin your life. Uh, why are you being so nice to me? Huh? I'm not, I'm just... Hey! What the hell is going on here? Why are you talking to her? Uh, cause she's my friend? I don't need your permission to talk to my friend. What? What the hell is wrong with you anyways? What did she ever do to you? You got a terrible personality. What? We're in high school now, you gotta grow up. He's got a point. You're all pretty mean to her. What? You're taking his side now? Uh, I was never on your side. I didn't say anything because I didn't want anything to do with you. You're a terrible person. What? You're so ugly, both on the inside and outside. You should take a good look at yourself in the mirror. <gasps> How dare you! I got Bami! Ichi and I became good friends after that. I hung out with him and his friends the next day. I had a lot of fun with them. And some of the kids who've been turning a blind eye apologized to me. I had a lot of fun that day. I can't remember the last time I laughed like that. On the other hand, Yabami stopped coming to school. I think Ichi's words really got to her. And the other kids started talking behind her back. A few weeks later, I started doing something. I didn't tell anyone though. Mika? What are you doing? Ichi... Nothing. Let me see. No! A notebook? She hasn't been to school in a while, so I decided to take notes for her. But don't tell her, okay? 
I don't think she'd appreciate it very much. What? Why? After all those things she did to you? Yeah, but that's all over now. She suffered enough. And, um, if it wasn't for her, I never would have met you, so... For that, I'm grateful. <laughs> okay, I, I won't tell anyone. Thanks. Mika, you're sweet. I like that about you. <laughs> Thanks. Wait, what? Attack on Mika! Hey, look! It's Miss Roku Mikan! Damn, she's so cute! My name is Hiroto Haneba. I'm just like any other university student. However, there is one thing that makes me special. I had the cutest girlfriend in the whole world, or even whole universe. And that's her, Chio Rokumikan. What is it? Nah, I was just thinking you're cute as always. I see, thanks. Chia was the daughter of the family that owns the famous Rokumikan conglomerate company. She's beautiful and has a cool and collected personality, and is also the type to be very decisive about things. Some people call her as the Ice Queen, but that doesn't matter to me. It was love at first sight. Even though people around me said, there's no point in trying, you'll never be a good match for her. After approaching her over and over again, I managed to finally go out with her. Please, go out with me. Huh? On top of that, there's something that I realized about Chio after I started going out with her. Excuse me, you dropped your handkerchief. Thank you. I heard you couldn't come to the lecture yesterday. Here, I took notes for you. Seriously? You saved me! Uh, mommy! Huh? Are you lost? I'll help you look for your mommy, okay? I sometimes think, is she a saint? Because she goes around helping people so much. She's like a ball of kindness! Of course, I was imagining a lovey-dovey relationship with Chio, but... For some reason, I feel like I don't really receive that kindness from her. I mean, to be honest, I never receive it. You can't even do that? You're two minutes behind schedule. Don't make me wait so much. Are you a baby? Leaving your vegetables like that. Eat them properly. Just like this, she tends to be super strict and mean to me. What's more, only when she's with me, Chio tends to space out a lot. You know, Ichi was like... Chio? Uh-huh? What is it? Were you listening to me at all? I'm sorry. I wasn't paying much attention. Hmm. Huh. Recently, Chio's been getting a lot of phone calls from someone, and she always goes somewhere else when she answers them. Curious, I once asked her, who's calling you? But she just answered, it's none of your business, it's just a friend. A friend? A friend, huh? What kind of friend calls you that often every week? The mysterious phone calls were still bothering me. We went out and had our first date in a while. I was still curious about what she was hiding from me. But today, I wanted to make Chio happy, so I prepared a special present for her. Today's gonna be a great day! Or so I thought. Chio, I want to give you something. A key holder? Well, we've been together for six months, so I wanted to get you something. Huh. It's an anagram design. It spells out love. Kind of cute, isn't it? Lame. Huh? Did I hear something? I said, it's so lame. I've been thinking, you have zero taste in gift giving, don't you? What? No way! Oh well, while we're on this topic, there's something I wanted to tell you. What? What is it? I want you to break up with me. What? Why so suddenly? As I thought, being with a peasant like you, it pains me. You know, I'm the daughter of the Roku Makan family. 
Our values are too different. It's embarrassing just looking at you. Anyway, I don't want to be with a lowly commoner like you anymore. Goodbye, then. Uh, what? What the hell? What's with her all of a sudden? And I mean, if she's gonna say shit about my present, why did she take it with her? Leave it here, damn it! After that, I lost contact with Chio. I've never even seen her on campus anymore. I don't know if she was avoiding me or what, but I never ran into her. I want to go home. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. I couldn't forget about Chio. Breaking up like that. I could just go out and find new love, but... Unfortunately for me, I was still in love with Chio. Then one night... But seriously, can you believe it? She should have known I was just a commoner all along. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Calm down. You're drinking past your limit. I know, but I can't help it. Hi, welcome. Wait, the group that just came in, that's... Chio? Shit, they're coming this way. <sighs> hey, she looks fine even though we split up. Of course she does. She's the one who dumped me. She doesn't need me anymore, huh? Damn it, she's pissing me off now. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, you know that hostess girl we met the other day at the mixer? We're living together, and we're getting married tomorrow. What the heck? When did you... I mean, where did all that crying go? Wait, you actually took her home that day? I started speaking abruptly, but of course it was all a lie. Part about going to the mixer was true, but none of the girls made my heart throb like Chio did. But seeing Chio look all fine and happy made me really frustrated, and I wanted her to get jealous. So out came that made-up story. Chio, did she notice that it's me? Whoa, she's totally staring! Oh, wow, Chio! Didn't notice you there. Uh, yeah, did you hear that? I'm totally getting married. The girl I'm with right now, unlike you, she's honest and cute and cares for me so much. Plus, she's got big boobs. She's seriously awesome. I see. Congratulations on your marriage. Y yeah I'm totally glad you dumped me. <laughs> Promise me that you'll be happy. Huh? Why is she crying? What the hell is wrong with you? Are you being serious? Chill and I broke up. I can do whatever I want. You're the worst. I can't believe Chio still misses this jerk. Uh, I feel so bad for her. Maybe her arranged husband actually might be better. Huh? Arranged husband? What are you talking about? I guess it can't be helped. Chio asked us not to tell. According to Chio's friends, Chio was pressured by her parents to go through an arranged marriage. She kept refusing, but the parents threatened her. If you don't listen to us, who knows what'll happen to your boyfriend? So she couldn't resist. Rather than me going through any trouble or danger, it would be better to just break up and let me free. That was her plan. And the reason she dumped me like that? I want him to hate me and forget about me. I want him to be happy that he broke up with me. Then I'm sure he'll find a nice person soon enough because he wrote to us the most wonderful person ever, is what she said. What? She never told me. Huh? This is... That key holder. She was holding on to it precis... She was holding on to it preciously. She said it's super important to her. Hey. Do you know when this arranged marriage is going to happen? It's tomorrow. <sighs> well, isn't it the perfect day for such a wonderful occasion? Oh my, yes, absolutely. Perfect for these two. <laughs> <laughs>
If we, the Rokumi Kans, and your family get together, our future is a promised one. I'm sure wonderful days will be ahead of us. Yes, yes, I must agree. Now, now, let's leave the rest of the young ones and let them get to know each other. This arranged marriage. <laughs> Hold it! Who, who are you, young man? What is it all of a sudden? Why, you surprised me. Sir, I know this is sudden, but please let me have Chiyo as my wife. Hiroto? Sure, my family is normal, and I don't have any special talents, but I love Chiyo the most in this whole world. I love her from the bottom of my heart. I swear I will never let her cry from misfortune or sadness. So please, please, let me have Chiyo. What are you talking about? Suddenly barging in like that. There's no way I would. Dad, I stand by him. I want to be with Hiroto. I love him too. I understand you wish for my happiness, and this arranged marriage is meant for me, but I want to be together with Hiroto. So please, please, I beg of you. But I think it's fine. Getting in the way of two people who love each other, karma will hit us back. Huh? Oh, actually, and I feel bad for saying this, but I'm not too eager for this arranged marriage either. I only came today to save face for my mother. So please, the two of you, you don't need to bow down so much. It's not like I'm angry. If the two of you love each other, you should be together. There's nothing sadder than an unwanted marriage with no love. Uh... Hmm... Well, Takuma, if that's your true feelings, I have nothing to say. <clears throat> as long as you're fine with it. However, what I am doing is merely canceling the arranged marriage. I haven't accepted your request yet, Hiroto. Start by creating a strong foundation that will promise Chiyo happiness. Then, I'll accept your relationship for now. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much! And so, we cleared our misunderstandings and we're getting along just fine now. The guy from the arranged marriage said, sorry for troubling you very apologetically. And Chiyo's dad also promised to listen and respect Chiyo's opinions more. Hey, just by the way, why are you like exclusively strict to me? Huh? That's because, um... You also tend to space out a lot when I talk. Promise you won't laugh. It's cause you're so hot. You're always handsome and nice, so I get embarrassed. I can't be honest about my feelings. Wait, so it was just you being embarrassed? Uh-huh. I was spacing out because you look so attractive. So that was the reason? Either way, this is the second time being saved by you, Hiroto. Huh? I'm sure you don't remember, but once you saved me when I got lost. That time, you said. You know, you only get to see rainbows after the rain, right? You feel happy when you spot one. That's why I want to be just like that. A rainbow. When you're feeling down, I'll just pop in out of nowhere and make you smile. Isn't that awesome? I couldn't forget the way you spoke to me like that. That's why I decided to be like a rainbow, too. To be kind to people. Uh, I guess I said that? It's fine if you don't remember, because I do. Thank you for saving me, Hiroto. You'll always be my hero. Now that I understand that the cool and composed Chiyo loves me very much, with this happiness in my heart, I vow to myself to make Chiyo the happiest girl in the whole world. Mika. Yuta, come on. Your dad needs to go to work now. Oh. Yuta, I'll be back, okay? You're a big boy now. Uh, can you wait for me? Okay. 
<laughs> That's my boy. I'll be back as soon as I can, okay? Okay. I'm Kaisuke Hashimoto. I got a divorce six months ago. The judge gave me custody of my son, Yuta. I was raising him single-handedly. He got lonely easily, especially after the divorce. Oh, I wish I could stay home with him, but I had to work, so... Mr. Hashimoto, good morning. Oh, hey, good morning. Thanks for helping me out the other day. No problem. Uh, how's your foot? Much better, thanks. This is Masaki Saijima. She was a secretary. I helped her out the other day when she tripped. <laughs> I really enjoyed talking to her. I should probably stop wearing heels. But those are really good on you. I'm sure you'll get used to them. Oh, thank you. I guess you're right. Okay then, see you later. Bye. Hey there, what was that about? Ichi, what are you talking about? I saw you talking to her. She's beautiful, huh? <laughs> How'd you meet her? Oh, she fell in the hallway the other day, so I helped her. What? Lucky you. <laughs> you know how many guys try to ask her out? Dozens. Oh, I see. I've heard about that. Why don't you ask her out on a date? What? She'll never say yes. You don't know that. A date? Sounds fun. I'd love to. Really? Yeah. But I, uh, I heard you turned down every guy that asked you out. <laughs> yeah, but that's because they were all so aggressive. I don't like guys like that. But you seem really nice, so... Oh, okay. And it'll be good practice for when I get a boyfriend. Huh? I went to an all-girls school, so... I don't know how to talk to men, you know? But I gotta learn at some point, so... <laughs> I see. I never thought you'd ask me out, though. You're single too, right? Well, kind of. I recently got a divorce. I got a son. A what? She seems surprised. Can't say that I blame her. So, I explained my situation to her. I was afraid she might be turned off by all of this, but... Hey, I know. Why don't you bring your son with you? I always play with my niece. I love kids. You sure? Uh, thanks. That'll be great. Sounds good. Can't wait to meet your son. I was really relieved to hear that. A few days later... Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. Hey there. Come on, Yuta. Say hello. Hey there. I'm Asaki Seijima. I'm Yuta Hashimoto. It's really nice to meet you, Yuta. Let's get going, shall we? Okay, come on, Yuta. Oh... Okay. It's Restaurante Studio! Oh, this is delicious. I love this place. Good to hear. <laughs> I heard about this place from a colleague. Yuta, slow down there, you're making a mess. Pasta is hard to eat. Here, let me help you. Here you go. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> How do you like it? Huh, I haven't seen him laugh like that in a while. Thanks for this. Of course. Glad I could be of help. The divorce, uh, it was really tough on her. My ex-wife, uh, she was having an affair. She invited guys over to the house and she told him to keep quiet about it. She tried to take his custody, but I refused to go with her. Anyways, we both had a great time. Thanks again. Same here. <laughs> You're really good with kids. Um, Mr. Hashimoto. Yeah? Why don't we have a sleepover at your house this weekend? Huh? I really enjoyed spending time with your son. I can help you around the house and stuff. Oh, thank you, but I don't want to trouble you. You sure? Yeah, no worries. It's pretty messy. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Hey! Hey, Yuta. Come play with me. Yuta, she's gonna cook dinner for us. Stop bothering her. Oh, it's fine. What do you want to do first, Yuta? Let's play in the other room. 
You too, Dad. All right, I'm coming. I'm gonna make some hamburgers. It's your favorite, right? Yay! This is Homojiro. Hello! Cute! Go like this. Like this? That's it. Great job. He's fast asleep. <laughs> he must be exhausted. Hey, um, thank you for doing this. Uh, if it's okay with you, can we do this again? <gasps> of course! After that, she came over almost every weekend. Yuta, I told you to put the toys away! No! I wanna play! But dinner is almost ready. Yuta, you better do what she tells you. Otherwise, she might stop coming over. <gasps> no! <laughs> Yuta, don't cry. Come on, we can clean up together. Okay. Hey, um... What is it, dear? Will you be my new mom? Yuta, what are you saying? Please? Uh... Yuta, stop it! But Dad, you want that too, right? Dad? Um, fine, fine. Um, Masaki? Will you be Yuta's new mom? I'd love to. We decided to get married. A few months later. Hey! Hey there, ring boy. Good luck today. We're counting on you. Okay. Hey, uh, I, I, I gotta tell you something. What is it? It's just that I never really proposed to you, so... Huh? Yes, you, you did. Well, I mean, I asked you to be his new mom, but, you know... Dad's been practicing a lot for this. <clears throat> <laughs> Masaki, will you marry me? Yes, of course. Attack on Mika. I hate my little brother. Following me around everywhere I go. As a child, I despised him. Yuki, my little brother, is three years younger than me and was very weak as a baby. Because of that, both my parents doted on him. And to me, they were always strict. Ah, oh, I wanna play with Big Brother too! I wanna play! Hirokazu, take your brother with you. Ugh, seriously? My brother didn't have many friends at his school. And because both mom and dad worked until late, I was the only one who could play with him. When I tried to play outside, he would always whine, saying, I want to go with you! Whenever I pulled a rotten face, Mom would always say, If you're not going to take him outside with you, play with him in the house. They always pressured me to be with Yuki, so when he suddenly gets sick, I could be by his side. Yuki always mimicked me. The way I talked, the way I acted, the manga that I liked, even food I didn't like. He always wanted to be the same as me. I had no idea what he was thinking, what he wanted to do. I couldn't understand him. His uncomfortable closeness made me feel sick. I soon became a middle schooler. Hey, I want to go to karaoke with you. Even as I grew older, Yuki continued to be super clingy. Shut up! People laugh at me! Why don't you try making friends for once? I don't wanna! I don't wanna! I wanna be with you! Ugh. A seventh grader, bringing his first grade brother along. Yuki couldn't understand how embarrassing that could be to a middle schooler going through puberty. Thankfully, most of my friends were kids from the same elementary school. That's why I subconsciously thought they understand what my family's going through and brought my brother along to friend gatherings. That was a huge mistake. 
when I was about to return from the restroom with Yuki. Hey, is Hirokazu always with his little brother? This voice? It's Misaki? Huh? Yeah, I guess so. Oh yeah, it's your first time hanging out with Hirokazu, isn't it? It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, because he always brings his baby brother along with him. Uh, apparently he has a health condition? It's difficult to hang out with Yuki for a long time. I never knew. I mean, I do think it's cool to take care of a family member. If it's all the time, I guess it's, you know. Huh? Big bro, aren't we going in? I wanted to cry. It's not like I'm bringing him with me because I want to. I thought everyone knew that. What shocked me the most was that even Misaki, my crush, thought this was freaky. Hey bro, you look pale. Are you okay? This is... all his fault! That day, I felt strong hatred towards him. More than ever. Misaki, I wonder if she hates me now. Hirokazu, I think this will look good on you. A necklace Misaki gave me, designed with a dark blue stone. She said it only cost a few hundred yen, but it didn't matter to me. It was like a treasure. Wow, that's so pretty! Ah! Yuki, go away! I want the same one as you! A matching necklace! Can I see it for a bit, please? Huh? Hey, stop! Don't pull it like that! Just a bit, please? I tried pulling the necklace out of Yuki's hand. What? Ah! But it ended up snapping. I couldn't stand him anymore. You little! What the hell are you doing? Ah, I'm sorry. This was so important to me. I'm sick and tired of you. You're not a brother to me. Get lost. Ah. I let out all my negative feelings about him. Never get close to me again, dumbass. It would be easier if he could just hate me now, I thought. The next day, Yuki began avoiding me. Even when I went out with my friends, he didn't mind about coming along with me. Thanks to that, I was able to have a peaceful morning. Freedom is awesome! I was walking around town with my friends in a great mood. Huh? Huh? Yuki? What the hell is he doing out here? Yuki came out of the store with a shopping bag in his hand. Huh? Isn't that your brother? Oh yeah! But wasn't he like, not allowed to go outside by himself? It's fine, it's fine. It's about time he grew up already. Forget that. Let's go to karaoke already. I ignored Yuki and kept walking. About an hour later, Huh? A phone call? I'll be out for a sec. Hello? Hirokazu, where are you? What are you doing? It was my mom calling. I'm at karaoke with my friends. What, are you yelling me about Yuki? Besides, it was him who started it. Yuki, he passed out on the streets. What? He was taken away in an ambulance and just hurry over to the hospital right now. I can still remember that feeling I had to this day. It was like the outside noise around me faded out like I was in a bubble. Yuki's condition had gotten worse due to increased stress and his body couldn't handle it. Fortunately, it was nothing life-threatening, but we were told he had to stay hospitalized for a while. Yuki, darling! Hirokazu, why didn't you go outside leaving Yuki all alone? After all this time, I told you not to leave him by himself! Maybe he chased after you because you left. What were you thinking? Ugh. No. No. I'm not. I'm not the one to blame. It's because he broke my necklace. Why am I always the one who gets yelled at? I don't even want to look after my baby brother. It's my fault. It's because I wasn't being a good boy. Please don't scold him. Yuki, it's okay. There's no need for you to worry about this. You poor thing. You're only nine, and you have to deal with this illness. Yuki is loved by my parents. 
course he is, with an illness since he was a baby. Instead, I'm the one who always gets yelled at. And Yuki is the only one who would cover for me. It always felt strange. Why does Yuki never make any friends and always tries to stay by my side? Maybe he's placing me by his side so he can easily blame me when something happens. Maybe he's looking down on me beneath that stupid smile. It must be. He's laughing at me, just like Misaki did. I turned on the voice recording app on my phone and placed it on the bedside table. I wanted to hear what he really felt. And I wanted to shove the proof in his face and tell him to never come near me again. Say your prayers. I placed my phone so nobody would notice and I left his hospital room. I'm sure he's talking shit about me to mom and dad, saying whatever the hell he wants. I was killing time in the hospital hallways when... Sir, hurry, please, it's urgent! Huh? Yuki, open your eyes, please! Yuki! What? Yuki's condition suddenly got worse. He soon lost consciousness and fell into a coma. A month passed by and Yuki still had no signs of waking up. I came across the audio recording I took that day. Oh yeah, things got really busy and I never got a chance to listen to it. What's the point of listening to this now, I thought. But before I knew it, I was pressing the play button. Daddy, Mommy... Was Yuki's faint voice. Do you think Hirokazu knows? Knows? Knows about what? Did something happen between you and your brother? Yesterday, I broke his necklace that was super important to him. He, he said, you're not a brother to me. He knows, Mom. Hirokazu was just being a bit emotional. I'm sure he didn't mean it like that. Besides, you two are true siblings. Even if you aren't related by blood, that will never change. What? I was speechless after hearing the conversation. Yuki and I aren't related by blood? I couldn't just leave that, so I took the recording with me and asked my parents. They told me what they had said was true. Yuki is adopted. They told me everything. He was the baby of an old close friend of mine. He was born premature, so he was placed in an incubator for a while, but... When the parents left the hospital before the baby did, they got into a terrible car accident and soon passed away. His grandparents were too old and they had no other relatives to rely on, so we decided to take him in. Yuki found out about this when he was six. He accidentally overheard our conversation. I didn't mean to tell him like that. He panicked a lot. It was after that, Yuki became more and more clingy towards you. He must have been scared that he wasn't related by blood with the people in his family. Maybe he thought if he acted more like you, he could one day become true siblings with you. I want to wear the same clothes as you was loud, selfish, and I always had no idea what he was thinking. No, it was me. I didn't try to understand him. I was always so close to Yuki, but I knew nothing about him. Oh, right. Yuki told me to give this to you. Huh? It was a necklace with a dark blue stone as a charm. He went out that day to buy this. I don't know what happened between you two, but he said he was very sorry. All for this. He's too stupid. Yuki really loves you. Even if I'm a terrible big brother? He doesn't think that way. Don't you remember? At the fair, you went looking for Yuki when he went missing. Now that I think about it, it was right after he found out the truth. It must have made him especially happy. Fair. Yeah, I remember. We went there. Four of us. And Yuki wandered off and went missing. Whoa, mommy, daddy! Yuki! I finally found you! Gosh, we were all worried about you! <laughs> I'm sorry! Jeez, you always go missing in times like this. Come on, take Big Brother's hand. Let's go back to where mom and dad are. Big Brother. 
Stay by my side, okay? You'll get lost again. Yeah. Yuki! I hate my brother. I have lots of shit I want to say to him, so... Hurry up and open your eyes. I'll come here every day until you wake up. Uh, big brother? That necklace looks good on you. Tummy! That only means something when it's said by someone you like. It's now my turn to understand you. Attack on Mika! My name is Ichi, and I'm 27 years old. I'm an office worker that's about to enter my 30s. I've been working at a consulting firm for almost five years now, but I've been struggling because my job isn't going how I want to recently. Hey, Ichi! Did you finish the paperwork that I asked you about this morning? I I'm sorry, Manager Sekoi. I just got back from doing a sale. What? That doesn't matter. Stop making excuses. You better have it done by today, or else... I... I understand. The main reason why my work isn't going so well is because of my manager's presence. Manager Sekoi transferred into our department about a year ago. I was having problems with him because he made me do most of his work. In addition, he barely reads through the proposal documents that I create and always sends them to the dumps. In the end, he insults me about them every time. Ugh, no, no! Do you actually think we can get customers with this kind of proposal? You waste too much time on things like this. I swear, you're so slow. But you can at least look through it a little more. Huh? I'm an expert, and I can tell when something isn't good just with one glance. You keep making excuses. That's why you're always going to be useless. Ugh. When I first joined this company, I had dreams and aspirations. But now, I was cowering under Manager Sekoi's treatment. As a result, I was less productive and kept losing confidence in myself. One day, a mid-career employee was hired into our workplace. My name is Manabe. Nice to meet you. This man has business operating experience. From now on, we're gonna put more effort into expanding our business. Make sure you guys show him the ropes around here. I feel like I've seen this man somewhere. Did I bump into him while doing some sales? Sekoi-kun? This man's gonna be in your department from now on. Make sure you take good care of him. Of course I will, boss. I'll make sure to raise him into an excellent employee. Hmm. I'll leave it with you then. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Just like that, our boss left manager Sekoi to be Maname-san's mentor and left. But a few minutes later... Ichi, go train that boss and teach him everything he has to know. What? But the boss asked you- I don't have time to be babysitting an old man. I'm busy, do you understand? <sighs> Either way... From the looks of it, you seem like you're going to be pretty useless too. Are you sure you have experience? Yes, I have some experience. <laughs> we don't need people that can't beat my number of sales in this department. Remember that. Let's see... If you can't get a hundred new clients to sign contracts within a month, you're fired. What? Leaving useless baggage around will be a hassle later on anyways. This is a direct order from your superior. You better not have any complaints. Ah, he's crazy! Well, good luck then. I mean, I don't know how much two useless guys can achieve. Don't worry about it, Madabe-san. I'll do something about it. Ichi-san? Please, you don't need to add San to my name or use honorifics with me. Manabe-san, you're older than me, so just speak to me normally. Thanks. You're a good kid. Just like that, Manabe-san and I became close. And we went around doing sales. There were a lot of things that Manabe-san didn't know at first. So we tried to get new clients while I explained things about our company to him. However, our results weren't improving, and we were spending our days worried. <sighs> they said no, too. I'm sorry, Ichi-kun. You have more work to do because of me. No, don't worry about me. Anyways, let's focus on trying to achieve the goal number for this month. By the way, Manabe-san, why did you join our company? Weren't you doing sales at another company? Yeah, well, I made a little mistake. After that, 
I heard a little about Manabe-san's past. Back then, Manabe-san was in charge of being the mentor of a new employee. He was giving her a bunch of advice with good intentions, but in the heat of the moment, he didn't realize that the woman's heart wasn't in it. As a result, she got mixed up in a factional dispute, and ended up quitting the company. By the time Manabe-san realized that she was hurting, it was too late. Manabe-san felt responsibility as her mentor, and after a while, decided to leave his job too. That happened? Yeah, I played a part in destroying a bright young girl's future. <sighs> oh wow, look at the time. Let's leave the old stories here. I'm going to focus on the work I have to do right now. Yes! Let's work hard together! After that, Manabe-san got the hang of the work, and our productivity in going around to clients increased. I continued to help with giving advice, and slowly, we were working on new business development. But... How long are you going to be hanging around that old man? You need two people to get the job done? How unproductive is that? The way you're doing things is wrong! No, that's not true! We've slowly been increasing our number of clients, too! <laughs> the profit you're making isn't even much! There's no point in doing business with a bunch of small companies! You guys keep putting effort into the most useless places! It, it's not useless! Manabe-san is doing his best, too! If we keep working like this seriously, I'm sure there will be positive results! That's what I told my manager, but the minimum number of clients that he required from us was a large number. We weren't able to achieve our goal immediately. It was almost nearing the one-month deadline when... Manager Sekoi began insulting us again! See? Look at what I said! You know it's almost the deadline I gave you, right? What are the results that you were talking about looking like, huh? That's... Hmm. <laughs> Do you realize your worth now? It makes no difference whether you're here or not. Basically, it's useless for an incompetent person to go around doing a bunch of sales. <laughs> if you're frustrated, go and get a hundred new clients already! I thought you were taking this seriously, weren't you? <sighs> Is this really how it's going to end? I was thinking things like that, and about to give up, but at that moment... I understand. What? Sure thing. I'll show you just how serious I am. Are you sure 100 clients is enough? Huh? What are you saying? Stop being so cocky! You can say whatever you want, but your actions aren't showing it! Hurry up and go out to do sales already, you incompetent man! Manabe-san... I'm sorry about earlier. I got you caught up in trouble because of me. Huh? What are you apologizing for? Anyways, let's get to work on claiming 100 clients. What? You were serious about what you said earlier? But with a deadline like this... Don't worry. If you know your enemy and know yourself, in a hundred battles you will never be defeated. Huh? You need to know your own strengths first. Then, once you're able to understand what the client wants, I promise it'll work out. As business negotiations started with new clients, Manabe-san immediately asked them about the types of problems they were having. Then he gave specific and precise advice, one after another. As a result, we were quickly able to increase new contracts. Wow, who is this man? Was he in the same industry as his old job? Huh? What? Is this? Finally, the deadline that Manager Sekoi gave us came around. The two of us were successfully able to get contracts with 150 new clients. Manager Sekoi was extremely surprised by this too. But things didn't end there. Hey you guys! Don't get too confident. Who said 100 new clients for the both of you combined? I obviously meant 100 new clients for each person. Basically, you didn't achieve the goal I assigned you. But... That's unfair! Shut up! That's not my business! Come on! You guys are fired! fire re How evil is this man going to be? Hey, Ichikun! Manabe-kun! What? Boss? Uh, hello, boss. What's wrong, sir? You must be extremely busy. What brings you all the way to the sales department? Oh, well, I've been hearing all about the hard work those two have been doing. 
I wanted to come in to thank them, but... Did something happen? Uh, yes. Manabe-san and I just got fired. What? What are you talking about? Ugh. After that, we told the boss about everything that's been going on. Then... You told them they'd get fired if they didn't get a hundred contracts in one month? What the hell were you thinking, Sekoi? Oh, you know, it's a figure of speech and... This isn't a joke! Besides, didn't I ask you to mentor Manabe-kun? You made Ichi do all the work, didn't you? Oh. Uh. Either way, you've never gotten that many contracts in such a short period of time either. Seems like you're the one that should be getting fired. Oh! Oh! I'm so sorry. <laughs> a little while after that, manager Sekoi actually got fired from his job. Turns out that his treatment towards me and his other subordinates came to light due to this case. As for us... I knew it! Manabe-san, you're famous, aren't you? <laughs> Did you find out? My presumption was correct. After doing some research, I discovered that Manabe-san used to be a highly skilled salesman in the consulting industry. You're amazing, Manabe-san. I knew you weren't just a regular employee. No, that's not true. I ruined a young girl's future. Your genuineness reminded me of her, Ichi-kun. If I had mentored her properly, she probably would have been an excellent saleswoman. Oh. I mean, it's too late now. I even lost some hair from the trauma. Even if she saw me now, she probably wouldn't even recognize me. <laughs> but, I still wish that I got the chance to apologize to her properly. Manabe-san... I finally found you! Huh? Y you Huh? Is this girl... perhaps? Turns out that this woman was the person that Manabe-san had been talking about. She was employed at another company after she left, and was actually pretty successful now. The woman had been searching for Manabe-san because she never got the chance to say goodbye. The reason I'm who I am today is all thanks to you, Manabe-san! What? Even after I moved to another company, I still use all the information that you taught me! Thank you so much! Oh, I see. Gosh, life isn't so bad after all. <laughs>